Professor McMillan sat in a small stone cell. They had been locked up together with Annie Beth Barmer and the twelve-strong crew of the good ship Doodle Doo. Those evil pirates will kill us all, wailed Annie Beth. But McMoo shook his head. If they wanted to kill us, why not do it straight away? Annie Beth would not be reassured. Then they must want to make me their pirate queen. They're not that stupid, said Pat, and the other men nodded in agreement. Suddenly, a key rattled in the cell door, and a gaggle of sword-wielding pirates pressed in. Their leader was a dirty, stinky old man with a steel hook where his right hand had once been. Come with us, lovers. Who are you? asked Pat. Men call me Long Pong Silver. Oh, I can't think why, gasped McMoo. Shift ye lily leather dogs. Long Pong smiled nastily. Moobeard wants to see ye and he don't like to be kept waiting. His temper makes the rage of Blackbeard himself seem like that of a mildly irritated hamster. Pat gasped. The soldiers exchanged nervous looks and Annie Beth groaned with fear. But McMoo just beamed. Ha, this is lovely, he said. I wanted to have a chat, perhaps even a cup of tea. Long Pong and his friends herded McMoo and the others through dark, dead straight tunnels, eventually taking a passage that ended at a large bronze door. The doodle doers were shoved into a rectangular rocky chamber, lit with bright torches and decorated with sumptuous tapestries. To Pat's surprise, crowds of people were standing around inside. There had to be two hundred or more, some talking in nervous huddles, some slouching in silence. Professor! said Pat. These people must have arrived on those ships outside. Passengers and crew from all over Europe, captured with their cargoes off the coast of the New World, McMoo agreed thoughtfully. Whatever does Moby want with them all? Pat clutched the professor's arm. I think we're about to find out. The room fell silent. All eyes turned to one end of the chamber, where Moobeard marched on to a low stage. Pat felt his legs quiver at the sheer size of the Terminator, and at the length of his beard, which hung down over his metal face like two overweight squirrels. The pirate chief's one green eye scanned the room emotionlessly. Don't let him spot you, McMoo warned Pat. He'll see through our ring blenders and know the CIA sent us. Pat nodded and ducked behind Annie Beth Barmer's bottom. Since there was plenty of room for two, the professor joined him. Greetings, helpless prisoners, said Moobeard in his low, grating voice. You are completely in my power. Don't kill me, Annie Beth beseeched him. Kill everyone else if you like, but please, not me. I'll give you all my money. I'll give you everything I own. I'll give you kisses. <laughs> I will give you to the sharks if you don't shut up, Moobeard retorted. They'd probably give her back, said Pat. And now I have gathered you all here. I shall send you back to your ships and let you go. For a few seconds, there was shocked silence. Then a ragged cheer went up from some of the relieved prisoners. Professor McMoo looked worried. That tin pot pirate is up to something. If he lets those people go, he'll have the naval fleets of half a dozen countries on his doorstep within a week. Pat nodded. He must know he can't fight them all. Perhaps he's planning to abandon this base. You'll never know, lover. A terrible smell assaulted Pat's nostrils, and he turned to find Long Pong Silver towering over him. Ye and your friend here ain't going nowhere. Moobeard spidey as ye came aboard, and it seems he has other plans for ye.